Amen. Amen. Such a great vision. The leaders, you that are here, the first service, the second service, the musicians. My God, beautiful church, powerful, mighty church. You may be seated. There was a point where, I don't know which one of you brothers, but I saw all the singers left. And I'm looking around for who else is singing, and that was you on the guitar. <laughs> I looked at him like I'm about to run. <laughs> you guys are blessed. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes we are so blessed that we become familiar with the blessing. We become so familiar with the blessing that we forget how blessed we are. So then God has to remove us from the blessing so that we can appreciate what we had that we didn't think we had. Let me give you an example. Earlier today I said, wow, I know that I put cologne on. And after half an hour, I don't smell it. So I sprayed myself again. This devil get me behind me. <laughs> Loose me. <laughs> I sprayed myself again because I got familiar with the fragrance. Mm. All right. Not quite. Come on. Come on. I heard so much fire in my soul. What time did you go to sleep? The first thing parents said, What time did he go to sleep? I got familiar with the fragrance, and because I could not smell it, it felt like it lost its worth. Come on. Wow. Come on. <laughs> but then when people pass me by, they say, hey, you smell good. What is that? Sometimes we feel so far from God. And we feel like we lost his fragrance and he's still with us. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. And you don't feel the strength that you need for yourself. But if you look at the reaction of the people you come in contact with, they say, man, you're blessed. My God. My God. And you say, thank you, Amen. but I'm depressed. You don't say it to them. I'm struggling with anxiety, insomnia. I feel like death is getting close. I feel discouraged. I'm thinking of the things that I did not accomplish. I think about the, the, you know, when I dropped out of school or when I got pregnant earlier or, or when I did this and you start to think about these things and everybody else looks at you and say but man but I thank God for your life if it wasn't for you I would not be here you don't realize that there is a fragrance that's on top of you there is a fragrance that's on top of you that maybe you got familiar with the smell with the scent of that fragrance but other people smell it and they want to know why so weary if God is with you wow why are you so weary if God is with you? As my son Josiah, he already had the answer, but he got overwhelmed because there was too much piling up. And I said, Josiah, it's piling up because you're delaying on the work. If you was to stop the work when it's given to you, you wouldn't feel overwhelmed when it piles up. Got quiet up here. I'm going to start walking to the back. I'm going to I'm like that. I promise you. And if you're afraid of Corona, <laughs> yo, I, I was preaching in the church the other day, and I said, "Listen, I don't be thinking about. It. I, I respect coronavirus. I just don't fear it right. because that word Corona in Spanish means crown. Yeah. All right now. And I refuse to bow my spirit to another crown because yeah. I know who is my Lord and my Savior. I know who covered over my life, and that spirit is not assigned to me. It's not assigned to the church." So I'm preaching in the church and I got excited and I ran. I was like, praise the Lord. And the person saw that I got too close. He was like, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, oh, my bad, brother. <laughs> but we have lost our joy. And we have lost that, that, that passion to want to go on. Because... Some of us got used to fighting giants. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got so used to fighting giants that when there is no longer a war, we feel that there's nothing active in our life. We feel God. useless. Come on, come on. It's like a person. I, I, I've noticed that some people that suffer through depression, and you know that they have depression, they won't admit it because 
the way that they medicated is overworking. They became workaholics. Wow, wow, wow. And when you don't give them work, they start to panic. I gotta clean something, I gotta fix something, I gotta do something because you, you, you don't want to walk through the valley of pain, of memory, where God is trying to bring you back so that he can heal those wounds. Amen. God wants to heal the wounds. And, 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 and as I was seeing, and God showed me, many of you have broken hearts. Many of you have broken hearts where you gave up hope. You have a dream, but you gave up hope. Because the level of brokenness... The level of brokenness has brought you to a place where now you're just waiting for God to do the miraculous. It's no longer walking it out. It's God, how longer is this going to happen? You promised me things that I have not seen. You're telling me things that I have not felt yet. Why is this happening to me? It's because God wants to show you how many times he has to separate his presence from you feeling it tangibly so that you can start to yearn for him again. Because many of the things that we cry for and we pray for, we don't need it as much as we think we do. The closer and the higher you get to God, you're going to realize that the things you thought you was going to die without was actually things that you did not need. When you change your mind, you're going to start to change what you attract. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good. Give me a high key. Give me a higher frequency because you play beautiful. But when there's broken hearts, they're going to turn into the melody of, of sadness and of sorrow. I didn't come here to talk to your sorrow. I didn't shit. That's it. Romania so. save others. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, sir. Let me read to you this text. And that's just, just to show the power of a frequency. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't talking about chakra. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. All right. Don't get confused with that. All right. The frequency will take you to a place where you're supposed to be. How do I know that? Because I study the brain. I'm a mental health counselor and a therapist. And I say that humble that God will even put me in that position. Certain sounds and frequency could take you to a certain place. Amen. And earlier in the service, we was talking about the, the, the woman of God that was giving the announcement said, come out of your house. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why did I find that powerful? It's because that word come out means to come out from where you are to another place. Come on. Yeah. To be delivered. Not just to, not, not just to be free, but to be delivered from one place to another. But in order for you to see and, and, and feel the things tangible that God is promising you, you've got to come out mentally of where you are right now. Amen. You see, because if you just come to church and sit and wait for me to move you, I can't do nothing for you. I can only tell you the problem and I can tell you how you can solve it, but it's up to you to put it to practice. Now, are you going to sit there for the rest of your life just sitting on a chair and becoming owners of the same chair? Come on, there's some people that will even argue for the same chair. That's my chair. I've been sitting in that chair for five years. I don't care how long you've been sitting in that chair. When well, you're going to get tired of the same thing. Come on, somebody. Listen, I don't 
don't just want to just tell people I'm a Christian. I want my presence to announce who I am. You should walk up in a place and demons jump out of people's body. That's why I was born and raised in. Hallelujah. Now, we didn't ask you if you want to be saved. You got saved. Forcefully. The ushers will say, lock that door. We were kidnapping people. We didn't know who was breaking the law going up. Us Spanish people didn't know. They'll be like, Sierra la puerta. That means lock the doors. Martha's daughter is getting saved today. She don't even know it. Martha's like, I gotta go. My friend is waiting in the car. Next day, like, go ain't going nowhere. Laying out people inside the car, people were getting saved, and they wasn't even planning on getting saved. You know how many times I got saved and that was not in my plans? I said, I'm going to the club, Jesus. I can't get saved right now. I got things I got to do in the world. I'll come to you when I'm 40. That's what I told God. He said, no, you come to me now. <laughs> come on, people of God. And many of us, watch this. Many of us have become addicted to drama so much that we don't worship God unless there's something traumatic going on. Come on. Come on. Sometimes God has to send the storm to get a praise out of you. Come on. Come on. Because God already knows what he put inside of you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows the weapons of mass destruction that he put inside of you and the responsibility that's on top of you. He knows the calling that is upon your life. Some of you should have been dead a long time ago. You should have been dead a long time ago. You should have been dead a long time ago. And even now with all the people that have died all over the world, here you are sitting down and there is not a praise in your spirit. Come on. You should be shouting and blessing the Lord. Hallelujah. That you can breathe. Come on. Come on. You can breathe. You can breathe. Don't let the devil confuse you and say, I can't breathe. I know that there was a black life not a movement before. I got the Holy Ghost. I can breathe. I can breathe. I got the root of my breath of God. This is not even about a color or a race. This is about a kingdom. This is about a blood washed nation. This is about people that say, you know what? I'm no longer a part of my culture. I'm a part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I'm not Puerto Rican, Dominican, African, Jamaican. I'm about the kingdom of God. When you get out of your culture and allow God to bless you, you will see the glory of the Lord. Come on. And this is what I love. I'm looking around this church and I see this as a multicultural church because God is calling the body to come together. You got what I need. I got what you need. Come on, church. Let us read this. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Chapter 12, verse 9. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Good stuff. And it reads like this. Thank you, Pastor. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Let me tell you what my daughter said to me. She blew my mind. I told my daughter, Destiny, that's 10 years old. I said, you're ready to preach. And she smiled at me. And I said, no, you don't understand. You're ready to preach. Wow. And she's still smiling. I said, no, Destiny, you don't understand. You're ready to preach, not on a Tuesday, not on a Thursday, on a Sunday, Destiny. You're ready to preach. This is what she said to me. She said, Daddy, you know why I love being with you? What I love about you, Daddy? She said that, we know we give you a hard time. <laughs> we, we, we know that we're not easy and we uh, make you go through a lot. She said, but you don't hit us. You're not quick to hit us when we do that. She says, you're so patient with us. Look at what she said. I'm sitting there like, what? She said to me, she said, she said, you're so patient with us that you give us enough time to figure it out. Wow. Wow. Come on. Come on. I don't say anything else. That's right. Come on. Amen. And I'm looking at her and I said, oh my God. That's right. Many times 
We do things in our life. And we are afraid that God is going to run out of patience with us. So we stop trying. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. We stop trying because we say, what's the use? If I keep failing you, and if I don't, I try even with my strength, and I can't come out. God didn't say in your strength his power is perfected. It's in your weakness. If you're losing strength, then you qualify for his power to be perfected in your life. She said, you have enough grace for me. For me to figure it out on my own. God's love is so tremendous. That he won't be quick to beat you when you mess up. But he will guard you and guide you and teach you. Until you can figure it out for yourself. And this is what I love. Because it says I will even boast on my infirmities. In my infirmities. Nobody wants to be sick. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, because it feels like it cripples your life. I see people that have been called for greatness, but because of infirmity, they feel limited. But I remember preaching one time, I said, listen, you got too much power inside of you to allow sickness and infirmity to keep you set down, to keep you bound in depression in your house. You got too much greatness inside of you. Listen, your greatness is enough to convert. I don't think some got that. In other words, let the anointing inside of me, hallelujah, make cancer a believer. Let asthma become a believer. Let diabetes become a believer. Why? Because your sickness will be a witness of the glory of God. When I went, listen, I was upset when they told me I had asthma. I said, I ain't got asthma. Right now. <laughs> Talk about it. And when I was in New York, I didn't have asthma. Uh Because there's rarely trees. Uh I go to Massachusetts thinking I'm going to breathe better. Uh Because I don't know if I got uh, immune to the pollution in New York City. (laughs) And I'm the toxic one. (laughs) But when I went to Massachusetts, they said I had asthma. I said, you mean I got no asthma? Couldn't be around dogs and cats struggling to breathe. Mm -hmm. And it hindered me because... When I first developed the asthma, I would try to worship and I would come out of breath real quick. Wow. And there was times where I felt like I was going to drop dead in the middle of worship. And I got so upset one day that I started to cry in the midst of worship. And I said, I just want to worship you. And I got angry. I was having an asthma attack. And I got angry. And I said, you're going to have to kill me right here. Wow. And I started to run around and I started to worship even more. And I started to sing when my sisters breathe, Lord. I don't know if you ever, uh, uh, um, we were singing the, the song of Eddie James, Let the Fire Mile to Never Burn Out. Uh-huh. Come on. And then there's a part that we added, me and my sisters, and it says, Breathe, Lord. So when we started to say, Breathe, Lord, immediately, like I felt like I was working out my lungs. I didn't understand that my lung was like as a muscle. And, and it caused me to. To, to, I said, listen, you're going to have to kill me here. Because God has been too good for me just to sit back and not be able to worship. He Come has on. given me the ability to worship. How am I going to sit there? And I got so upset that I said, as, I said, God, it's either you heal me or I'm going to convert this asthma. Asthma is going to become a, a missionary with me because I'm taking you with me. <laughs> you're going to preach with me. And, and God showed me that many times we get limited of what he called us to do because of fear. Fear of what if. Fear of not understanding the beyond. That's why, you know, nobody's afraid to climb a roof. You're afraid of falling. Nobody's afraid of pet a lion. You're afraid of it attacking you. It's the after effect. It's the what if that we are afraid of. And God wants to deliver you from the what if so that he may be able to heal your heart. Come on, somebody. You got everything you need. You got a powerful church, powerful pastors, powerful musicians. Amen. Praise the Lord. A few more minutes and I'll be done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Earlier we was talking about intimacy. And as the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to me earlier, he showed me on how many are discouraged. Let me give you an example. There was a sister that called me. And she said that she was on the highway. And she saw that there was an accident. Mm -hmm. And when she went, there was a woman out conscious. She pulled the woman out of the car. Mm -hmm. Out of her own adrenaline, her fear. 
And the woman did not have a pulse. Wow. Mm -hmm. She did not have a pulse. And her boyfriend was there freaking out, crying, and saying, you know, she doesn't have a pulse. So she said, the first thing I did was not call 911. The first thing I did was I started to pray. Yep. Wow. Yep. And I put my hand on her heart and I started to pray. As she started to pray, the woman came back to life. The woman came back to life and she called 911. After that happened, she wanted to know the following day what happened to the woman. And she found out that the woman passed away. She felt discouraged. And she said, how is it that God calls us to do these great things? And yet, we don't see the manifestation of what he said. Mm -hmm. And many believers are discouraged on praying for certain things because they don't see the manifestation. And I want to tell you something that God told me when one of the members of my sister's church, his mother died. Mm -hmm. And there was over 40 of us praying in the hospital. Uh -huh. And we saw that they used three carts of, of those things to resuscitate her. Uh, she had five different antibiotics. And they were crushing her chest, trying to bring her back to life. She would come back to life, and they back down, and they said, listen, we got to stop doing that. You know, we're frying her, her brain. And he said, keep going. And the reason why he said keep going, because he was not a believer. But the power of the Lord would move, because my sister's church is a church that operates in deliverance, just like ours and just like you guys. And, and so he was a baby in the Lord, but his faith grew, and he started to believe the teachings and preachings. So he was applying what he was taught in the church. Uh -huh. Because he looked up to, him, up to us as his role models. And he was seeing how God was doing the miracles and, 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 and wonders, right? And so in the midst of that going on, he was telling the doctors, no, I believe because I saw a vision of my mother walking inside the church dressed in white. Mm -hmm. So he said, keep trying. Mm -hmm. And all the brothers was there. And everyone was there. But a week, excuse me, a month before his mother landed in that bed, I remember the Lord, we, I'm at the altar, and, and I didn't want to pray for nobody. And I'm going to be honest, the reason why I didn't want to pray for nobody at that time is because I felt that people started to create the, the, the altar uh, for fortune telling. Wow. I got so tired of everybody just wanting to lay in their hands a prophetic word. Listen, I don't mind giving a word, but at that time I felt like everybody just was more focused on what is, where's my future? Tell me my future. I said, I'm not a fortune teller. If I ain't got a prophetic word, you ain't getting one. Come on. If God ain't talking, then he ain't talking. I'm not going to stir something up to make you feel good. I'm not going to lie to you. I ain't going to lie on the spirit of God. And so in the midst of that going on, I didn't want to pray. You know, but this woman is standing there and the Lord says, call her forth and pray for her. He says, now hug her. I hugged her. And he said, tell her that I heard her petition. Tell her not to worry. I'm going to give her peace. I'm going to reconcile her children. And I'm going to give her rest. And then when he said that, I saw her walk away and I saw her spirit coming in and out of the body. And I said, what is that? And it's kind of like I didn't want to hear what he was going to say next because I was struggling with that. And then a month later, when she ends up in that bed, we're praying with faith. Listen, we prayed enough faith to, to rise up the dead. Everybody. There was no doubt. And we was praying with all our faith. The doctors, even the head was down. And we were deep in there, the whole church. And I'm saying, God is going to do this miracle. And we saw me and my, my brother-in-law, the pastor of that church, we felt when her spirit left the room. We felt, and we understood now that was a hollow shell. And when we felt that, the pastor grabs him and says, she's gone. Son, she's gone. And he says, she can't be gone. Because God showed me, you told me to believe. You told me to have faith, my God. He was only applying what, what we taught him to believe. Yeah. Come on, yeah. church. Come on. Come on, right. And when he was when the spirit of his mama yeah. left, he was trying to compare the situation with the word and the vision. And he said, this don't make sense. I walked away and I was angry with God. I was angry with God. I said, God, why didn't you lift her up? You would have been, you know, this would have brought glory to you and his family would have been saved. Mm -hmm. And I was upset with God. And the Lord said to me, he says, son, listen to me. He said, I don't move where there is no glory. Listen close, church, to what I'm about to tell you. He said, I don't move where there is no glory. He says, because I received glory in her death. Come on. 
He said, I received glory in her death. He said, remember what I told you to tell her? He said, because all her sons and daughters wasn't talking to each other wow. for years. Come on. Her he said her petition was that her sons and daughters be reconciled and that she'll give her soul and her life to him if he does it. So he was basically telling me there was an exchange. He said there was an exchange. If I would have rose her up, it wouldn't have made a difference. He said I received glory in her death because I know where she is even now. Even though it's absent from you, I know where she is. Come on. And he said to me, I don't move where there is no glory. You know what that taught me? That many times you pray for a thing and you don't see it come to pass. It's not that you didn't pray hard enough. It's not that you're not good enough. It's not that you're not powerful enough. It's that if God is not going to receive glory, he ain't moving in it. What did he say when the answer is not? Woman, this is for the So that the Lord may be glorified. And so I told the man of God, I said, listen, the Lord was glorified in your mother's death. And so I reminded the sister that recently went through that situation with the tragedy. I said, listen, I know that you're upset and you're hurt that the woman died the next day. But do you understand that she was dead and you touched her and she came to life? And she started to, oh my God. She started to scream and cry because sometimes... We, we, because we don't see something long term we feel like we're not effective but I'm going to tell you something it's all about consistency yeah. yes. and I promise you that the word that I'm giving you now is different from the word from this morning why? because you're supposed to be the overflow Come on. you're supposed to be the overflow and God is getting you ready because when I saw the front I saw the broken heart I saw God repairing but I also saw that God was equipping you to receive things that you were not even qualified for right now you are in the teaching you're on the teaching moment. God is discipling you, second service. Amen. God is discipling you for what he wants to do in your life. But my question is, are you going to forfeit it or are you going to go forward? Wow. Mm -hmm. Don't ever live as if whatever God is going to do in you, he's going to do it anyway. No, you can be replaced. Wow. Wow. You can be replaced. Wow. You can be replaced. If you don't stand in your position, somebody else will. And God will give him a greater anointing because of your rebellion. Come on, somebody. He did it with David and Saul. Come on, somebody. Do not think that, oh, I got enough time. God is going to do it anyway. Listen, if you ain't ready, then step out. If you're still a civilian, then this fighting for you. But if you're a soldier, then it's time for you to step forward and allow God to equip you. Because the fertile ground that you're standing in, God don't just want to bless you. He wants to bless what comes after you. And what comes after that. And what comes after that. But hallelujah. But you got to be willing to want to receive it right now. And if you're praying for God for a relationship and you have not got it, it's because some people that came close were only an assignment to bring you down. You want to hear the prophetic? Because I, oh, I, I, I see, I see some people. You wrong, and I promise there ain't no conversations here. We don't conversate. I have not watched no videos. But this is why some people that you brought to the church that you thought was still going to be here ain't here. Wow. Wow. You thought you was going to marry this person. You thought you was going to be with that person. And now here you are. Come on, church. Help me out here. And now why? It's because when there is a person that's not willing to carry who you are, they'll become an assignment against you. Come on, somebody. When somebody don't know their position, they'll challenge your position. And that word even came from my daughter. She said, Daddy, God called you to be a leader. God called you to be a leader. And whoever's not willing to play the background and carry what you have will become an assignment. I said, Destiny, you're ready to preach. Wow. I'm sitting on the bed like, are you kidding me? Where did you learn this? I know it's the Holy Ghost, but it just blows my mind. Church, it's because not everybody that used to be assigned to you is assigned to you now. Yes. Many times we make we make permanent living for, for passing pilgrims. Yes. For temporary people and temporary things. Yes. And you start to 
question yourself, am I pretty enough? Am I handsome enough? Am I good enough? And you're saying, God, you know I'm struggling. I don't want to feel alone. I don't want to feel this way. Come on. It's not like God don't love you. It's like what I said before. You've got to come out of that mental and emotional place that you are and walk into who God says that you are, but also understand who you are right now in order for you to receive. Why? It's because, once again, when somebody comes to give you a package with a mailman, he has to give it to the one that it's been assigned to. Yeah. Right. Only you can put that signature. Nobody else can forge it. It has to come from you. Yeah. But in order for you to receive, you got to get in your position. Yeah. I'm going to say this to you. If you don't feel blessed, you're out of your position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. That's good. That's good. That is very good. Situations have shown up to distract, it, to distract you and to derail you. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like you're moving forward because like a train that's off the tracks, you've been derailed. Mm -hmm. And in order for that to be fixed, you've got to get back into your position and remind yourself who you are. You are not what you did. You are not what you did. You are not what you did. You are not what you did, no matter how terrible, no matter how horrible it is. That's not who you are. Receive the grace of the Lord to move forward because there is enough grace for you to figure it out. There is enough grace for you to figure it out. But God wants to reposition you, church. Yes. God wants to reposition you, church, because he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. And if you feel, watch this, sometimes we feel like we have outgrown a place. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to drink some tea real quick on the curve of the fall. Give me one. Take your time. Take your time. Sometimes we feel that we have outgrown a place. And it's not that you have outgrown a place, it's that you have outgrown a place. Say that. That means that you suffered enough to know better this time around. Sometimes we feel that we have our grown a place, but that only means that you're shedding. I'm preaching on Spanish. I keep doing it. <laughs> we, you have our grown a place, and sometimes you feel like, what else do I have to give? Should I be here? Should I move out of the state? Should I leave it? Should I look for something else? I don't feel useful. I don't feel like, 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 like I can work. It's that you got to show your potential even now. Don't wait for titles. Right. Right. Start wow. to show that you're willing. Wow. Start to show to willing because the pastor will tell you, you know, we give glory to God, you know, uh, you know, for what he has done. But honestly, you know, like I tell people, um, you know, I'm a prophet and, and an apostle. But once you get to that place, you want to go right back down and get low. So, you understand sometimes Sometimes you go so high that you don't find nothing else up there. I'd rather be a servant. Listen, I love the usher ministry. I told pastor, I said, hey, you, you need me to be at the door. I'll be at the door too. Because I love that. Amen? Praise the Lord. So in ending, I'm going to say this to you. Intimacy doesn't mean that you're going to get pregnant. Intimacy doesn't mean that you're going to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Intimacy is when you're getting to know someone, right? And then referring it with us and God. But in order to get pregnant, you have to be put in a position. I don't want to get too, too deep because I know we got children here. <laughs> but you have to be able to, to, to be open to who God is uh -huh. and his will. And many times his perfect will looks like hell on earth. Sometimes transition is scary and it's painful because God wants to operate in the places where you fear, in the places of beyond. Do we want to live in where we have control or do we want to live, hallelujah, where we have no control and we see his hand, his glory and power. The people that are experiencing the miracle works and wonders are the people that are living with no boundaries and borders for the Lord. They're hearing for the Lord. And I was telling my, 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 my leaders uh, um, last night, I said, listen, I said, I got convicted because many times it's like I, I, wait, I was waiting for God, like an intercom, to interrupt me just to talk to me. 
Many times we're waiting for God to interrupt us to start a conversation, but we don't live a life of being attentive to hear his voice. It's like we live our life randomly. We go to work, we eat, we do, and then we wait for like God to... Carlos, it's me, your God, the Lord. This is what I want from you. And it's like we live a life with him where he has to interrupt us. Come on, church. We come to church looking for God to interrupt us. We, we, we look at the preacher and at the musicians to see if they're playing good, if you're preaching good, for God to interrupt us. But we don't live a life where we are attentive to hear the voice of God. What does God say to me right now? God, are you talking to me? Am I missing something? Or, or are you going to say, this word don't apply to me? It applies to his body. So it might not apply to your what, but it applies to your spirit. It applies to your soul because we are one body. Yes. And it's time for us to repair this. Yes. There is a, a, a spirit of rage that has manifested itself in the state of New Jersey. There is a spirit of frustration that has manifested itself in New Jersey. Because I was telling the pastor that last night as I'm in the hotel, I was wrestling. I could not sleep. I was wrestling and I saw a python that wrapped itself around me and I could not sleep. And I'm wrestling with this thing. Come on. And I heard a scream in the spirit. Come on. And I saw angry people in rage in New Jersey. Frustration. I saw the spirit of murder in people's hearts. Where they don't see nothing else of violence. And I ain't talking about just the hood in the street. I saw that the atmosphere. I saw that the atmosphere was full of people that are angry, that are frustrated, that feel that they have to prove themselves. Where there is no peace. I saw dark clouds in New Jersey. My God. Gray clouds inside houses and apartments. My God. I saw people hitting their steering wheels, frustrated. People quitting jobs, arguing in the street. My God. I saw parents so distracted that children were touching things that they should never touch. My God. My God. My God. My God. And I heard God say, distraction. Distraction. Why distraction? Because the devil wants to distract you of who you really are. So that you will operate in the fullness of what you are. And I heard screams in the spirit. And I'm in the hotel. And I, and, and, and I was saying, I felt like I was in between in the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And I heard screams in the spirit My God. coming out of New Jersey. My God. So you're not just fighting your own battle. You're fighting a demonic, listen, the spirit of Leviathan. You're fighting this, this spirit of witchcraft, this warfare, this, this, this gang mentality, this, 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 this thing, this hatred, this murderous thing in the state. My God. My God. And even though there's resources in the state, this is what God was showing me because I didn't study none of this here of Connecticut, uh, of New Jersey. Even though there's resources in the state, it feels as if it's not available to you. Yeah. Come on, church. Oh my God. Yeah. As if it's not available to you. Upsets and, 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 and disrespectful people. That when you're trying to get help, you can't get that help that you really need. There is a resistance. I saw walls. Like, like, like a maze that will cause you to become frustrated. Hallelujah. And it's hard to figure things out. And I saw people trying to think, trying to meditate, and struggling. Am I talking to you, church? Is God talking to you? Frustrated, trying to pray and say, God, I'm feeling. I even saw some of you saying, God, I'm feeling something, and I don't know what it is, but I feel like something is going to happen. I feel something in my spirit, something is not right. You felt uneasy in your spirit. And then some others are just numb. Some others just stopped feeling the presence of God a long time ago. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Return back to your first love. Amen. You know how you return back? Surrender it all. Yes. Stop trying to do things on your own. Surrender yourself completely. Surrender it all completely. And you will see that God will start to handle you once again. 
So I want to say this to you in ending people of God. Hallelujah. That God, I saw what God was doing in the first service. I saw people pregnant. But then I see here that there is an overflow. I see that God is equipping. It's like, it's like a flow, like a tsunami. That God is taking, he's preparing a group of people to carry some things so that they may be able to impart in you. And I also saw the spirit of evangelism that needs to wake up in this church like never before. Come on, come on. I saw, God was saying to me when I was in the room, when I finished the first, he was saying, I desire for this house to do as they used to and as, and as they used to be when my people would flood the streets and evangelize out loud. He said, remind, remind New Jersey what, what they're capable of because you know what? Yes. New Jersey's been through a lot of stuff, but there's glory in New Jersey. There is power in New Jersey. There is a movement of God in New Jersey that many states don't have. Do not take it for granted. So this is the sound of the shofar and the sound of the alarm. God will give you the desires of your heart, but your job is to get into your position. Don't focus on what's lost. Let the dead bury the dead. Get in your position. Get out of your mindset. You're not broken. You're not a victim anymore. Be very careful the words that you speak over your life. Yes, yes, yes. Filter your words. My God. Don't fall into the trend when people say, I'm dead. No, you're alive. Don't lie on the Holy Spirit. People say that that's a form of saying, no, I'm laughing. No, you're speaking death over your life. When you say you broke, you're speaking that over your life. When you say that word broke, you're not just saying I got no money. You're saying I am completely broken. And God was telling me, tell them. Tell the overflow. That's what he called you, the overflow. Tell the hey, he said tell the overflow to God what they say to be careful what they touch and entertain not everybody is a prophet you got a lot of witches and warlocks operating in divination and witchcraft prophesying a thing be very careful who you connect to yourself on Facebook and who you allow to speak in your life I caught the atmosphere now in Jesus name and I'm binding and rebuke the spirit of witchcraft I feel like there is a fight here, Pastor. I feel like there is a I feel like there is a fight here. Because there's many of you that came here to receive. But I feel like there, there, there is a wrestle going on right now in the second service. There is a and it feels like witchcraft. Father, call it out. I want those that intercede to start to intercede right now. The leaders of this house start to intercede now. We're going to burn this pipe down now in Jesus' name. This is not boredom, that's bondage. Start to get into a spirit of prayer right now. Oh God, oh God, oh God, Father, 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 pour fire on your leaders in this house, Father. Lord, give them more strength that they may be able to break. Lord, 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 give more fire to the intercessors, to the prophets of this house, to the ushers of this house. Hey, Palm reading is not of God. Hey, numerology, astrology, all these things that people be using. Zodiac signs. Buddhism. Come on, somebody. I feel it. I feel it. Hey, Shata. 
We're going to burn this thing up right now. We ain't leaving until God deals with this thing here. We're going to deal with this thing now. We're going to deal with this thing now. Gypsy spirit. Gypsy spirit. Ancient spirit be binded now in the name of Jesus Christ. We destroy and shatter every glass wall and ceiling now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We kill off every demonic egg in the name of Jesus. Woo! Hey. We bind, hallelujah, the witch doctors that speak against this house in the name of Jesus. Hey. The bitter people, the renegades that left this house. Spirit of rebellion. in your spirit. Get right with your tithe in your offering. Get right with your submission. Get right. Seducing spirit. Oh yes God. Oh my God. Scandalous devil. I need you to pray. I need the whole church pray. Come on church. Come on, church. Scandalous spirit. We bind every lie of the devil against the men of God and the women of God of this house, against the leaders and against the ministry of this church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, this house shall not fall. This house shall remain victorious in Jesus' name. Every lie spirit be binded now in the name of Jesus. Put fire in these seats. Woo! I saw a woman rising up against this church. Jezebel. Hey. Shando Ramande sa. Rependo bosso torre mekenda masatama. Ushers and leaders, this is the time to be more attentive of everybody, everybody, every. We love on everybody. Hallelujah, but you gotta watch. You got to watch. Hey. 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 Shandebo Raman Sata. Repemen Sakaya. Jezebel is religious too. Jezebel speaks tongues, and Jezebel don't just possess women, it possesses men too. Cover your first lady. Cover your first lady. I don't care what your opinion is. I don't care what your opinion is. Well, I feel the power of the Lord. I don't care what you think her qualifications are. Sickness falls upon 
Ikandere be shere mande suka re manda baba haya. Hey, rebe shanda mo shata. First lady, get in your position and take what's yours. Take the grace that comes with it. The mantle that comes with it. Not everyone is going to adhere to your voice because not everyone is sons and daughters. Oh, Rabba Some are passing pilgrims. Hey! You will not feel uncomfortable in your own house. This is the Lord. You will be appreciated and honored. And I cancel every assignment now and future assignment against this marriage in Jesus' name. And for those that pray against them, because you may not agree, repent. God didn't call us to stop praying because we think somebody is Jezebelic or Delilah and all that stuff. Listen, God called us to find the spirit. If you see something wrong, you pray. I'm just only speaking what the spirit of God is showing to me. You know, shatare mansia. Because you don't understand how much your words affect. And even though you may speak in secrecy, the Spirit of God would allow her to feel prophetically. Remember, there is a fragrance. What fragrance are you carrying? If you want to be blessed, get in your position because you won't be surprised. Because your greatest blessing won't come from what you think is coming. It will come from what you least expected. Why do you need the first lady and the lioness? It's because it's the lioness that has to confront Jezebel. And it's the lioness, it's the lions that have to be behind the lioness. Come on. The lionesses, that's even a word, are the ones that have to stand guard. Us leaders also need a hedge. Why? Have you ever seen... The, the, the picture where it will show a shepherd and the sheep all around and it will show the shepherd feeding them. See, as we're feeding you, we need you to hedge us. Yes. Yes. Your job is to hedge. Your job is to pray and sustain so that we may be able to do what needs to be done. Father, guard those doors, Father. Guard the door, Sando Bashanda Ramakansia. Oh, Reman Sataya Rabashaya. Lord, guard the doors, guard the doors, guard the doors. Be careful who you let in your house, church. Because they'll leave their spirit inside of your house and you're wondering why there's chaos. Yeah. 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 Be careful the gifts that you receive. Because demons attach themselves to items too. The Bible says if you touch an accursed thing, you will also be cursed. We can't be naive and say, Well, I got God. Well, you could be you can have God and be oppressed. You don't have to be demon possessed, you can be oppressed. Be very careful what you let in. I promise you guys, if you repent. And you pray for this ministry. God will take you higher. Listen. God wants to take you to a higher purpose. What's the opposite of higher? Lower. What do you think the devil is coming with? He wants to bring you down. Come on. Come on. You got something beautiful now. I see too many churches. Big beautiful churches. That are now gone. They've called Massachusetts. The preacher's graveyard and also wow. Connecticut. Yep. Oh my God. Do not allow this to be a memory. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Do not allow this. Don't allow a temporary feeling mm. to become something permanent. Yeah. Yeah. God is going to bless you. I made many mistakes to the people that used to cover me 
because I felt that they were not seeing the potential that I had. But it's not always about your calling. It's about the character that has to come with it. It's not that you're not anointed and not gifted. It's that there is a character that you need to have that will shield and protect your anointing. Yes, Yes, sir. You can't just be reckless. You can't be powerful and reckless. God told me that power without wisdom is reckless, is useless. You know that I told God, I said to the Lord uh, last year, I said, God, I I was talking about power. I said, you are so powerful. He said, why do you boast in power? He said, for "For I don't boast in in, in power. He said, what I love is wisdom. Because wisdom can convert power into what it needs it to be. You see, if you you could be all stronger, you could challenge somebody, but wisdom says... I can make you my friend. I can convert your thoughts. I can make my enemy my friend. I can make my enemy my guardian. Come on, somebody. That is wisdom. That is the word of the Lord. Lift up your hands right there where you are. Hallelujah. If there's anybody that can play music or something, I don't know if they're gone. If not, then we just pray. Hallelujah. If you could just come in here. Ah, God. Hallelujah. Glory. Reconciliation needs to happen in this house. Some conversations of peace and forgive me have to happen. Wow. 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 Let it go. Let it go. Wow. It doesn't matter who was wrong. It doesn't matter who was right. This is not a race. Forgive me. The minute that you make it right, you're going to feel the glory of the Lord. Why would you rob God of his worship because of an offense? If you don't worship because you're upset, you're offended, you're robbing the one that woke you up this morning. He loves you. He loves you and he loves the one you're angry with. We got to love the people for him. I feel that very strong that there needs to be reconciliation. Because there's so much power in here. So much potential. Yes. There's enough potential here to open up many churches in New Jersey and further out. Wow. 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 Why? It's because the calling over your pastor is apostolic. And you got a great pastor. How do I know that? Because when he was talking to me for the first time, he was just telling me the schedule. I heard his heart and I became a little boy. And I said, this man is a real pastor. I heard the love, not of his voice, but of his heart, how much he loves all of you. He makes sure that in both services, he accommodated all your needs. This ain't easy. It's not easy. I told God one time, Lord, I I love you, but I got a problem with your people. (laughs) I don't like your people. I know why Moses was mad. It's not easy doing what we do, but he loves you as a father. And God wants to elevate this man of God and his first lady But you've got to get in position so that this church can give birth. Why be a renegade and leave the church and out of anger start your own thing when you can be birthed out? If you leave on your own, you're going to struggle on your own. But if you're birthed out, look at all the resources you've got here. They will come and help you. Yeah, 
Shama. Build the ministry that will help you to paint the walls. They will, I feel the power of the Lord. They will hey, Reneshem the Messiah. They will help you to beautify the church because there's many pastors in this house. There's many prophets. There's many of everything here. You're not going to sit down forever. You just got to show that you want this thing. Don't look at the leadership and say, well, they already occupied. There's no room for me. Yes, there is. We don't have enough. That's right, Lord. The labor is heavy and there's only a few laborers. We're calling on the Lord of the harvest. You look at the worship team. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. Because not every selection of song ministers to every culture. Because I see a Spanish ministry birthing out of here too. I see a Spanish church coming out of here. I see a Brazilian church birthing out. But the Brazilian church, I see it further away. I don't know where. I see it further away. But I see this church birthing out a Spanish church. I saw flag dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're watching. I saw flag dancing. I saw I saw people doing sign language interpreting. I saw I saw your own broadcasting station. I heard the Lord say, hope for the hopeless. I saw your worship team recording professionally. Album. I saw you singing in Israel. I also see the church intertwining with the Jewish culture. sit on this house the way that he sat on the donkey is the people cried out Hosanna which that means help me New Jersey is saying help me birthing out therapists in this place for teenagers and children with disabilities. The last thing that I saw was a store inside the house. Where, where those that it's difficult for them to work will be able to work for the church and bring revenue. My God. My God. My God. For the house. Like a room store now for outreach food is going to be your best friend <laughs> the Lord will use the food in this place not only of the giving but also of the selling to draw the people and to promote what you're doing 
but I see different foods of different cultures of this church. <laughs> God is showing it to me in the spirit. I saw somebody crying because there was eating a dish that they only ate in their country. I hope yeah. <laughs> and they didn't think that they would get it here. My God. Doing arts and crafts in the streets, drawing the people in with activity, using your talents. For those of you that sew, it's your time. For those of you that draw, it's your time. So you may say, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a prophet, but everyone in this house has a talent. Yes. And God is going to use all of you to do the work, whether you're a painter. Believe in the vision that God is, is doing in this house and what he's calling you to do. And he's going to bless everything else. I pray that the Lord blesses you in your finances and I pray promotion over your lives. I pray that you're healing for your body and for your family in Jesus name. I pray for those of you that are married and, and were struggling to have children that you may get impregnated in Jesus mighty name. I pray for those of you, hallelujah, that have miscarriage in the past, that you will not miscarry again in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you to get that man and that woman of God that God has assigned for you immediately in Jesus mighty name. I pray that your credit gets fixed in Jesus mighty name, that you will achieve the things and do the things that you never thought that you would have in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for reconciliation in your family close and long distance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your brothers and sisters that are strung out in drugs for them to get delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God gives you the spirit of consistency that your family will see you and start to follow and start to follow after your legacy and your footsteps in Jesus name. I pray that the curse be broken over your life and over your children that your children will not be the mistake. Hallelujah. That has been in your legacy for generations to generations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Get in alignment, church. Get in alignment. Get in your position. God wants to bless you. That is the word of the Lord. I am Apostle Dr. Carlos Crespo, the senior pastor of HODT, House of David Tabernacle. We are the home of the blood watch. Like I always say, 